we want to solve this equation and notice this is an absolute value equation. So don't forget to first isolate the absolute value. To do so, I will add 3 to both sides of the equation. So I'll have the absolute value of 6x minus 5 is equal to negative 2 plus 3, which is a positive 1. So I did isolate the absolute value. Now, for the absolute value of 6x minus 5 to equal 1, that means what is inside here, and that is the expression 6x minus 5, must equal 1, or 6x minus 5 must equal negative 1. And all we need to do is solve these two linear equations. If I add 5 to both sides here, I'll have 6x is equal to 1 plus 5, or 6. Then divide both sides by the coefficient of x, and you'll have 1 as one solution. I'll let you check it. Or here I'll add 5 to both sides, and I'll have 6x is equal to negative 1 plus 5, and negative 1 plus 5 is 4. Divide both sides by the coefficient of x, which is 6, and we'll have x is 4 over 6, but let's go ahead and simplify. 4 divided by 2 is 2, 6 divided by 2 is 3. So my solution set is the set containing 1 and also 2 thirds. Both of these are solutions to the original equation. Here we are solving an absolute value equation. Notice the absolute value is isolated. It's by itself on one side of the equation. Also notice now though, now that it's isolated, notice you have an absolute value equal to a negative number. What does that mean? Remember, the absolute value will never be a negative number. Since it'll never be a negative number, this equation has no solution, or I can use that notation to denote no solution. If you have an absolute value equal to a negative number, the equation has no solution. No real number for t, when you take the absolute value of it, will ever equal negative 6. Notice we're solving this absolute value equation. Well, we have this absolute value isolated and also this one. For this absolute value to equal this absolute value, either this expression inside, 2x minus 3, must equal this expression within the absolute value bars, 4x plus 5, or this expression within, 2x minus 3, must equal the opposite of the other expression. So what we need to do is solve these two linear equations. So let's do so. Let's subtract 4x from both sides, just because I have that old habit of moving my variable terms to the left, but it makes no difference. If I subtract 4x from both sides, 2x minus 4x, that's negative 2x minus 3 is equal to 5. And go ahead and write all this down if you need to. For example, the next thing I'll do is add 3 to both sides of the equation. So go ahead and show that step if you need to. If I add 3 to the left side, I have negative 2x. If I add 3 to the right side, I have 5 plus 3, or 8. Then divide both sides by the coefficient of x, and I'll have that x is negative 4. And that's one possible solution. Now let's go ahead and look at this linear equation on the right side. Let's go ahead and use the distributive property. That's negative 4x minus 5, and that's what I need to solve. So I will add 4x to both sides. 2x plus 4x is 6x, and if I add 4x to this side, I have simply negative 5 left. 
then I will add 3 to both sides. What is negative 5 plus 3? Negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2. And I'll finish solving by dividing both sides by the coefficient of x, which is 6. So here I'll have that x is negative. Go ahead and simplify 1 third. So what is our solution set? It is the set containing negative 4 and also negative 1 third. And I'll let you check. Go to the original equation, let x be negative 4 here and here, and a true statement will result. Do the same thing with negative 1 third, and then you know you're correct. These are both solutions. Notice we have an absolute value equation. We've got an absolute value equal to an absolute value. Now the only way this is going to happen is if x minus 5 inside the absolute value bars on the left side is equal to x plus 2 that's inside the absolute values on the right side, or if those two expressions are opposites of each other. Because if they're equal, of course their absolute values are equal. If they are opposites of each other, their absolute values will still be equal. So that's how we solve this. For this to be true, either x minus 5 must equal x plus 2, or x minus 5 must equal the opposite of x plus 2. And I have two equations now to solve. All right, let's solve this equation on the left side. Uh, no parentheses, no fractions. I will subtract x from both sides, moving variable terms to one side, constants on the other. So on the left side, I'll rewrite and subtract x on the right side of just this equation. I'll write x plus 2, and I'll subtract x. And watch what happens. x minus x, that's 0x or 0, and I have negative 5 is equal to, notice the x is subtract out again, is equal to 2. Now what happens when all variables subtract out and you have a false statement? Negative 5 is equal to 2, that is a false statement. That means the original equation here has no solution. So this equation gives us no solution so far. What happens on the other side? I'll have x minus 5 is equal to negative x minus 2, taking off parentheses and distributing. Now I will add x to both sides. So here's the left side. I'll add x. And here's the right side, and I'll add x. Notice what happens on the left side. x plus x, that's 2x, minus 5 is equal to these x's subtract out, and I get negative 2. Now let's finish solving. I'll add 5 to both sides. So here's the left side, and I will add 5. Here's the right side, and I will add 5. 2x minus 5 plus 5, these subtract out, and I have simply 2x is equal to negative 2 plus 5, and that is 3. How do I finish solving this equation for x? I will divide both sides by the coefficient of x, which is 2. And I'll have that x is equal to 3 halves. So this equation, our original equation, has a single solution, and it is 3 halves.